I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is January 8th, 2017. And in this video, I'm going to be going over how to write a simple Photoshop script in JavaScript that will take an image. And I'm kind of referring to like an icon image, like I have an icon right here. And I really want to take this image that's 512 by 12, 512, and I want to save it as a PNG in different size files. So I want to save like 10 different versions all at once. And so I'm going to write a script and show you how to use it and how to write your own script that can do that. Now let me start this off by saying two things. One, I'm not a Photoshop expert. I use it to fiddle around and do some images and things for work here and there, but by no means am I some graphic artist. Uh, and number two, I have an older version of Photoshop, CS2, which I bought years ago, um, and I use it, so it's older, but I think these scripts should probably work just fine on the newer ones. If not, scripting is available in the newer Photoshop. You may just have to tweak a few things. And if anything, there's probably more features. So I imagine this would work, but there might be better ways to do it in the new thing, in the new Photoshop. Um, but anyway, so to start off, uh, you can edit these scripts just in a simple text editor, but it is going to be a bit confusing. Now, um, because you're not going to get text highlighting, and you might be see this animation here going for Sublime Text showing text highlighting. Uh, I usually use IntelliJ, or I use a WebStorm now. I've been fiddling with that, and I like it. But most of you might not know or need or have those, and they're a little heavy-handed. They do a lot more things. So what you might do is Sublime Text. Now, Sublime Text is not free, but they do have an unlimited um, evaluation time. So you can download it and use it kind of forever. Um, so you go down here and click on Download, and go to the version you need and download it. There we go. Okay, so just run it. Can install it here. Next, next. And just let it install. Uh, but now when it starts up, it doesn't have, uh, it's not configured correctly for text highlighting in JavaScript. And I don't fiddle with it much, so I had to go look up some information to even get it working. Um, but, okay, where do you, oh, there you go, Sublime Text. So start up Sublime Text. And then what I have to do, you have to do some configuration. So you go down here and you go down to install package control. And so now package control has successfully been installed. Yay. And now I can go to tools and do command palette. And I have to do install, type in install um, package control. And then click on that. I think. Wait, I just messed it up. Oh, sorry, I just messed it up. Sorry, go to Tools, Command Palette, and go to Package Control, and Install. So Package Control, Install Package. Open that up. I should, it's talking to the repositories, and I should get another little thing to pop up. And I can type in Babel. That's the one I want to install. So that handles JavaScript. So I'll click on that. And it will install. Okay, looks like it went pretty quick. Okay, so that should be ready to go. So now that I've installed it, the next thing I need to do is to copy over the code. So let's go over there. So if I go over here, um, if you go into gist.github.com, Patman Denver, that's where I put all my gists. And in here somewhere, there'll be a save multiple icons.jsx. Right now it's at the top because I just added it, but it might, uh, you might have to search for it later on. Uh, so you click on that, and this is actually the real code that's going to do exactly what I mentioned. It's going to take a image file that you have open, and it's going to copy it over and make it 512 by 512, save it, make it 256 by 256, save it, and so on and so forth. I keep saving those files. Uh, but I come here, click on raw, and I'll select all this code and copy it. And then I'll paste it in here. And right now you can see there's no highlighting because I just pasted it. It's not sure what kind of file it is. So now I'll go here and say save as, or just save, and I'll put it on my desktop. Desktop. And I'll just call it, I don't know, doesn't matter what you call it, multipleFiles.jsx. Um, yeah, jsx. Dot jsx, that does matter. And hit save, and you are not highlighting. Not highlighting. Okay, let me pull it back in. 
No, you're not highlighting. Okay, I don't think Babel got installed. So let me do that again. Tools, package, control, install. Babel. Okay, you're not installing Babel. Mm, I don't think it installed Babel. Install package. It's acting like it's not installing. Okay, let me close it and open it again. We start all over again. Package, install. to the repositories. Oh. There it goes. Now it's installing Babel. You can see it down there. Don't know why it did that. Okay, but it's probably confused because it just installed it, so it may have to refresh, and I don't know if there's a refresh button or not, but I'll just kind of close it and reopen it. There we go. So now I'm getting all my, all my highlighting. Uh, which is going to be really important if you start to make this or decode it or do things. It's really helpful. Um, okay, so it's all there. It's actually on my desktop. So having done that, now I'm going to go... Uh, I got an image here, and I'll put links to all these in the show notes. And this is just an image of a Docker icon. And I'll just uh, put it over here on the desktop. And then I'll go start my Photoshop. I've already got an icon in there, but I'll open that one. Okay. Make my life difficult. Okay, so open this guy. So now that I have this guy open, he is my focus. That's how this script works. So this one's open, that's my focus. And I can go to File, Scripts, and then go to Browse. And I can go browse for this specific script. And so I can go to Desktop, Multiple Files, and load the script, which will run it. Now, when it runs, it does have some stop points. So actually what it already did is it already copied that whole thing into a new file. So I'm not going to mess with the first file. And then it also opened a um, new interface that it opened up. It's browsing for a folder. So it says browse for a folder and it brings you right to where uh, the original file is saved or should. And so I can make a new folder here and I'll call it Docker. And so basically you choose a folder where you want all your multiple images to go is how this script works. And so I hit OK. It says, OK, I'll put those things in there. And then also, how do you want to preface the, um, the names of the files? So I'll just say Docker. And so what this can do is we get Docker underscore 512, under, Docker underscore 256, etc. So let me see. Bef and now when I hit OK, it's going to make all those icons. Um, well, not yet. If I hit OK, it's prepared with all that information. And now here it tells you what size icon it's going to make. And you can say yes or no. If you say no, it's going to stop. If you say yes, we'll make them. But just so we can see... Okay, now I'm stuck. I'm going to say no. And when I say no, it, it deleted that extra file. But that got me stuck, didn't it? So let me make, open this Docker folder over here. I'm going to bring it in here in a second. Uh, and we go back to Photoshop. And let me shrink this a little bit so we can... Just to make sure I get in the video. So now if I bring in here is the folder where all these are going to be made. I'm going to pop them right here. There's a Docker folder. Okay, so do that and go File, Script, Browse, and I'll go find it again. Multiple files, Load. Paste the new one, it says Desktop. Choose the, the folder where you want the files to go. Hit OK. And then give it a prefix name. Hit OK and then say yes. And as you see it making all those files going down. And there they all are. And so now I can shrink that. And let me go back to my desktop and reopen that folder just so I can see it easier. And there we are. So there's 512, 256. It made all the icons. Well, in my case, icons are just PNG files. 
but it made all the different sizes and it's via the script. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of nice to do. And so if that's all you need, then you're kind of done. But what I'm going to do now, oh, but one more thing before I go on to the next area. Um, it's a bit of a pain to keep reopening that script all the time when you want to use it. So what you can do is you can go into your, you need to go find your uh, Photoshop folder, which in my case, we, where are we? There we go. So go to the base directory of your Photoshop file folder. Now in there, there should be a presets folder. And then go into the presets folder and then go into scripts. And so what you can do is you can drop the script in here. So if I take that multiple files, I just drop it in here. That's all I got to do. And then I can go in here into Photoshop and kill Photoshop. And say, yeah, don't say that. And then reopen Photoshop. And now I can go, let me drag this back in here. So now I can select my image. And now if I go to File, Scripts, there should be, and there's my script, multiple files. And I can run it from here. So now it's there, which is kind of nice. So if that's all you need, life is good. Go on, we're done. Uh, but if you want some more, I'm going to go through and step through a little bit how I did the script and kind of go over it and do some tweaks to show you how to start writing your own scripts. But this is probably, this is my first Photoshop script. I may not write any more, um, but hey, maybe it might help you write your first Photoshop script. Okay, before I get started into tweaking the script and doing things, here's a site you probably need to go to, the Adobe uh, DevNet Photoshop scripting site. So I'll put that in the show notes, but you can go there and there's a JavaScript reference. And so you can go in here and you can start... Uh, figuring out what methods they have and what they do, and at least gives you a place to start to get some examples maybe, or maybe do some cut or do some searches based on what you can and can't do in here. Um, but with that, let me get going. So now let me open Photoshop and I'm gonna switch over to WebStorm just cause I'm just more used to it's highlighting in its tools. Otherwise it's gonna drive me a little crazy. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is here, here's my code, same code. And I've actually, it's a different name. It's actually in the script right now. And I can run it. Uh, it's under scripts, uh, 1013 save icons, and it works just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to um, comment a lot of it out. So now I can still run it, but it won't do much. But we'll kind of go a little bit hand in hand. We'll just go step by step with what I know. So I'm just starting out. So it looks like right here, it looks like it probably brings target uh, Photoshop into target. Not sure what that does exactly, but maybe it just gives it. Uh, top billing. I don't know. Uh, and then for me, I had to do a couple of things here. So I had to, and it looks like here, I'm doing a couple of things. One, I am, um, I, I'm switching the units over to pixels because I want to get the size. Otherwise, when I was grabbing the size, it was grabbing the size for me in inches, but I actually want the pixels. And so I'm saying, hey, use, use pixels um, as your rulers. And then over here, now I am coming down and I am making a copy. So here is the active document and I am making a duplicate of it. So I make a duplicate document and I get a, a, set, of, a set of variable to it. So I have, act, I have a hold on that new document and then I grab its width and its height. So I have the original width and the original height. And I'm also setting the initial preferences. Oh, da -da -da. I might be doing this one wrong because here I, I am setting the preferences to the ruler units. I think that needs to, you know what? I think my code's wrong. I think that should actually be up there where I'm getting a placeholder saying, give me, I want to get a hold of the original units that you were intended to be in. But for now, I'm actually going to set them in pixels. And then when I'm done, I'll set them back. That's my understanding. So I think that actually should have been up there. Um, but now if I run this as is, let me save this and run it, um, which is probably not, well, I should probably undo that. That's okay. If I do this, it should just make a copy. And that's all. And the copy will stay open. So if I do that, I go file. I've saved it. And I go scripts. Boom. Boom. I made a copy. And it's a nice deep copy, too. So I can go here. Let me just prove that out. And I can say 
well, let me open up my um, this cloud icon I was working on. So there's this cloud icon I was working on that has several different layers. And so I'll do that. And so you can see all these layers. Now I'll run copy, and it actually will copy everything. It copies all the layers. It's an exact duplicate of the file, is my understanding. Uh, so there. And so now I got the new one. And you can see I have all the layers. So it copies everything, which is nice. Um, put that back down. Uh, but right now it's all, I've, I've cut, it did all those. So let me see. Now, uh, now it looks like there's some settings here where I'm saying, uh, I'm just putting some variables together that says, well, eventually what I want to say, this is a PNG. So I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'm setting the format PNG eight false transparency. I don't understand all these little nuances to the PNG, but I kind of copied and pasted this from somewhere else. And so that's a setting saying if, when I save as a PNG, that's kind of the, the format I want. Um, then here I'm doing a little check here. So I want the original width to equal the original height. In my case, I want it to be a square. So I don't care what size it is as long as it's a square. And so I'll comment that out and then I'll go down here and do else. So now we can ignore this in the middle for now, but what it's going to do is say, Hey, is the width equal to the height of the, of the document? If so, do the information here. If not, uh, run this, uh, the little dialog box will open, which says, Hey, they must be the same. And then it, then it stops. So if I come here and I make a new document, I make them, make them not equal, right? So that's not equal. And then I run this, it should yell at me. Oh, well, it hasn't been saved. Sorry. It also, I don't have all the error handling in the world on this. So it needs to have been saved. So let me, let me change the canvas size on this one temporarily. So now they're, now they're not equal. So now if I do that, well, it did copy it. It did copy it, but it says they must be identical. And then that probably shouldn't be a confirm. That should be a, um, well, other, other, well, prompt. It should be a prompt, right? I think. So I'll say no, but also there's a little bug in my code here because I shouldn't, you don't want to make a new copy of it if you haven't even gotten there yet. Okay, so there's that little bug there. So I, I really shouldn't be making a new image if I've already confirmed that I that I can't go on. So that's kind of silly of me. Uh, so I can just take all of that. Yeah, don't worry, it's doing it. I could just take all this code and put it in here. So that way, if it is, yeah, you, you shouldn't be making a new one. It's not the end of the world. You just close it out, right? But, but now it shouldn't even make one. So if I do that and I say, do that. But you did it. Okay, let me say. Now it has another bug, probably, right? Okay, now it's acting up. Oh, because I didn't grab the height. Yeah, that's a problem. Duh. Moved the code too much, didn't I? Oh, because that's the original one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another problem. Let me undo that. It's okay to move those, but I should have those as... Uh, that. So I'm grabbing... Yeah. I need those. I wasn't defining those variables before because it was part of but. There we go. And then should be able to move those down there, right? Okay. So now I'm grabbing the original width and height of the actual document so I can use that. Now that should work. There we go. Heights must be identical. Oh, but I don't want a prompt. I want a, I don't know what I want. I only have prompts and confirms, right? And I'll change it back to a confirm. 
for now. I think there's other dialogue boxes, but I haven't learned them all yet. So, uh, okay, so there we are. So now I come here and I'll do that. So now what this is going to do, there we go. Oops, no. So now what we're going to do is add these in. So now this is the, uh, the select dialog, which is going to say, um, find the folder to put this in. And I've also put this directory right here. So if you do that directory dir, which I defined earlier, so I defined it as the actual path where the current file is. So that way it'll open up the same folder that the file is in, which is a convenience, right? Um, otherwise you, you can choose a new one, but once you've chose something, then I get the result back. So I know what folder you intend to put these in. Uh, then I ask you for a name, you give me a name and I save that name off, which is going to prefix all the files. And then I set an array. So this is where you might want to change things. So in this array, I have 512, 256, 128, 96, so on and so forth. So if you look through this and you say, no, I don't want a 24, then just remove the 24. Oh, I don't want a 48. Just remove them. So now it won't make those. Uh, but I just put all the, or if you want to make something different, put something different in there. Um, and then I do a confirm, which basically that's that pop-up that says, hey, do you really want to do all these? And it gives you a list of the ones it's going to do. And then once you say yes or no, I get that result back. So if I do this and I leave it as is and run it, it should make a new copy. Um, and then it'll go through all those prompts and then it won't do anything. It'll just leave that new one open. So let's run that. Oh, well, they must be identical. So yeah, there you go. So let me uh, undo that. There we go. So now undo that and run it. There you go. So we made the new one. It opens up the same folder. Now I can choose the Docker folder and give it a name. My Docker. And hit OK. And it gives you this response. And now you can say no and stop it or yes and go forward. But if even if we go yes right now, the code, there's nothing there. So I'll say yes, and then we got nothing, right? And let me go open up that uh, Docker folder. So here's the Docker folder, which still has those images in it, but I'll delete them so that we can show that they'll make them again. Delete. Okay, now. Now we're doing something, if you're not a coder, this is a try-catch block. So I'll, and what that is, is this says, hey, try to do this code inside of here. Because sometimes you do some code and you have an error, and you want to be able to handle that error gracefully. And so let's say you do this code and some, something bad happens. Well, you can catch the exception. So if there's an exception, it'll a little box will show up and say, tell you what the exception is. But also what we have here is a finally. And what it finally does is no matter what happens, whether this is whether it's successful or it has an error, um, what it'll do, it'll always do what's in the finally block. And so for us, it's kind of important. So those initial preferences that we uh, grabbed, so here's initial preferences, we want to set those back. And so this sets them back to wherever they were. Uh, also, that copy we made, we don't want it to, to exist anymore, so we actually close it. And so we take that do copy and we close it, uh, no matter what. So, right, so if I do this um, and go through the whole rigmarole, it will make the new one and it, then it won't do anything. It won't save any files because I haven't, this is coming it out, uh, but it will delete. It will, you know, close this file out, which is kind of nice. So I oh, forgot. Um, I oh, got stuck somewhere. There we go. No. So I get some strange errors in Photoshop these days, probably because it's so old. Um, okay, so if I save that, now it's going to make the new one, but it's going to run that finally thing eventually, and so it will close it, which is convenient, right? So I'll hit save icons, it makes it, and I'll choose the Docker folder again, and I'll give it a name, and hit OK. It'll tell, me, it'll tell me what it's going to do, and I hit yes, and it does this, which there's nothing there to do, and then it closes. And so if I look over here in the folder again, in the 
yeah, in the doc folder. There, there's nothing there. So now we'll do this. That says go for it, which is what we got back from here. So basically, as long as this is something valid, as long as it's not like null um, or false, this will go through. It says, hey, if you really confirmed, if you confirmed a yes, then go for it. If you confirm no, then you stop. Um, and yes or no, you want to close that new file. But, you know, I could have... I do copy. Do I use that anywhere? No, I guess that actually could be... Yeah, that could be it down here, right? Well, nah, I'll just leave it there. Uh, so, so go for it. And then now we're going to iterate, all of, iterate through all of those sizes. So here we're grabbing... Uh, the size array, and so this basically says, okay, we're going to have an iterator, so it starts at i, i equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, as many as these are. This is an in an array. And then for each one, I will do the following. And so, um, oh, yeah, I left that coming. So I'll comment those out, and I actually left these in here, commented out for a demo purpose. There we go. So now what this will do, confirm. This won't actually save them, but I'll get a little pop-up that says I'm the size, the size you are in the array currently. So it'll be like 512, 226, and so on. So if I run this, I should see. It creates it, you know, I'll choose a folder. New file, hit OK. It asks you if you want to go forward, hit yes. And so now it's in that loop. And so the first one is 512. Size 512. Name would be new file underscore 512.png. Then hit yes. And now it goes to 256. And you see that's the name of the file that would be created. So you can keep going through. The files aren't actually being created because I commented that out. But you can see it's actually iterating through the process. Almost the end. And then 16 is the last. And then boom, done. And it closes it. But now we want to actually do the real thing. So here, we'll see this bit of code, which does a do copy. So it takes the it takes the uh, file, which we call doc copy, document copy, and it resizes it. So it takes it, resizes it, and it resizes it according to that size array. So there it is, uh, and this is like the width and the height. I forget which is which because they're both the same in my case. Um, and the resample method by cubic. I just used what was ever out there, uh, and that seems to probably be a valid way to do it. And then, let's see what else we got going. And then I came down here, and now we want to, all this has done is resize the image. We haven't saved it. So now we export it, export the document as a new file, and use that destination folder which I saved before. That was the chosen folder we chose to put it in. Uh, and then we put that icon name that we chose, underscore the size array, which would be 512.226, and then .png. And there's also some export settings that we set before that are in there. And so that's the export type, save for web, and then SFW, which is the variable up here, which we set in a few things. So that's where we set it to PNG and false and all of this stuff. Um, so you could probably save it as a JPEG just to go look around and see how you define JPEGs. Probably document type .jpg, I'm guessing. And there may be some other things like transparencies or whatnot. I don't know off my head because I'm not an image guy. Not to that level. Um, okay, so now all the code's back. So now it should run. So now I should be able to take this and it's all saved. And I can bring this guy in here. And now if I run it, it should export it. <laughs> Oh, wait, I chose the wrong folder to die. <laughs> Docker folder, there we go. And my file, hit OK, and hit Yes. And there we go, there's the file being created. Done. Uh, now also, as a simple example, we'll do something weird um, that I don't want to do in this case. But now I could take that uh, size array. So here we are. There's that size array. And let me say I just double it in one direction. And I'm guessing this is probably the width. I guess we'll see. 
So now if I double it, so let's take that size array and double it, I should get an elongated image, right? He says, hopefully. So let's export it. I mean, script, sorry, script, run it, choose a folder, elongated. Yes. And there we go. It's a, they're elongated. Look at that. So now I should be able to click on 512 and it's elongated. So hey, I guess that was width. So um, there you go. So there's my script. There's how you do a little. You can get started in scripting in, in Photoshop. I'm sure there's a lot more cooler things you can do in here. It's very nice. It's JavaScript. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff out there to teach you JavaScript. Um, but pretty simple way, and you can set up a script, and you can actually get access to it real quick. And so if there's something you're doing a lot of repetitive work, it's pretty nice. I like it. So cool. Uh, but that's it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.